Hello and welcome my friends. As you can see, it's another Chillaman's deck profile. This time obviously we're combining it with the Light Sworn friends. We got a bunch of milling support. That's uh, yeah, that's warranting a deck profile and deck upgrade. Hope you're going to enjoy it. Hope I can uh, maybe show you some new sauce that I've been cooking up. It took a while, but uh, finally it's here and let's get right into it. So let's get right into the deck profile. And as you can see, it's a chunky one. So let's get started. Obviously, as always, we start with Rhino Heart. We only play two because Kit is still banned and the normal summon Rhino Heart is not the best. It's still a good name, yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Obviously, we continue with three of the girls. Clear no-brainer. Then three of the stepsisters. Another no-brainer. We're playing tier. We're not reinventing the wheel in that sense. We're playing two scream because three is just too many. We don't want to break our hands. It's still an amazing mill and amazing card. Sometimes you miss the third one, but in most cases you're fine with two. Another one where you're fine with two is Saliak, but let's not uh, leave Saliak lonely and let it be accompanied by some other traps. Obviously, uh, yeah, not much to say. Trivikama is uh, a bit of an annoying break, but it's just worth it. And I mean, Metanoise is just there uh, to have different names. And uh, yeah, also obviously the graveyard effect to recur some tier names is uh, quite nice at times. Then another no-brainer, we're playing three Pearl Rhino. Uh, obviously the QCR that is out now uh, is in mail, but uh, yeah, it's not here yet. Still some nice bling. And uh, yeah, let's have some terraforming. And uh, actually let's swap into a different planet as well, Rifesoft. And uh, yeah, while we're at Rifesoft, let's actually get that one Fenrir to search tier cache. Uh, just the one, right, to have that option. Um, Makes the deck a bit better going second, but overall it's a bad mill. We don't need too many of them. It's still a solid one, but let's not overextend ourselves. And while we were visiting some other planets, let's visit some other friends. Uh, yeah, the only two Ishizu cards left greet us uh, and uh, yeah, want to party with us. Very nice, obviously, uh, especially in this format right now. Then another card that uh, yeah is kind of needed is obviously the Beast King of the Swamp. We play this one because it's a level four aqua and fusion substitute for the one and only Lulu. So uh, yeah, not much to say. Now we come to a bigger package of friends that help us. Obviously you saw it in the title. We are playing some light swords. Three vice, two of the dragon, and then two wolf and two Felis. Um, the ratios, we can talk about it a bit. Vice is by far the best one. So we play three. Wolf and Phyllis are needed uh, to continue with the combos to get big value out of the uh, uh, adult Minerva. And uh, while the dragon is insanely cool, um, if you're playing a bigger Light Swan package or if you're playing with a bit more of a focus on the Light Swan cards, you can uh, definitely play the third one. We're going to talk about it a bit later when we talk about cards that didn't make the cut. Uh, but yeah, two is absolutely uh, fine. You could play three if you really want to, but I felt like the third one was kind of annoying at times. And then we are charging right through the profile with uh, obviously the Charge of the Light Brigade, an amazing card. Sadly, it doesn't mill off effect. I guess it's good because it can't be ashed if I understand it correctly. But uh, yeah, obviously if you mill a tier name with this, it's a bit annoying. But for other cards, it's fine. And searching something like the Vice or a name for Vice to discard uh, or discard. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty nice card to have. Then, what really lets us going is uh, yeah the three militias. It's just amazing. There are ways to even profit more of this. But uh, yeah, with these just these three militias for our destiny heroes, it's more than enough. Uh, we'll have to see if Konami lets us play with three for a while, or if they're going to change it uh, next ban list how they have done it in the past. But uh, yeah, so far we play three absolutely balling with this card. And now, due to the many bricks that we play, right, we need a way to clean our hand. And the best one, the trusted one, is obviously the Horus package. Uh, three Mseti, the one Happy. And for now, only one Sark. I'm heavily thinking about playing a second one. Uh, it's not the best card to mill, of course. But having more options to clean our hands from these annoying bricks or engine requirements, uh, yeah, it's much needed. Um, Overall, not much to say about Horus cards. We know them, we love them. Uh, let's just get going uh, with another mini engine, let's call them that. The dangers, obviously they have additional benefits, being a level four, 
uh, dark, dark aquas. Uh, but yeah, they still are there to uh, clean up our hands so that we uh, yeah can play if we have no bricks in our hand. Doesn't happen often, but if it happens, you want to have that as an option. Now coming to uh, yeah the two random one-offs. One Night Sword Serpent, just a very easy uh, level four water that matters, right? That summons itself if you mill it, uh, just very nice. And then the one, um, yeah, extra foolish burial, still waiting for the rarity upgrade, it will arrive, hopefully. But uh, yeah, sending any spell, obviously, to Rubikama being the main target is just amazing. And that rounds up a 49 card main deck, I believe. Again, the 50th would be uh, the extra sarcophagus, but uh, yeah, so far I think I'm still okay with uh, just 49, maybe for some good luck or whatever. Coming into the extra deck, we obviously start with the one and only Lulu. What a gorgeous card! It's uh, yeah, um, I'm, uh, let's let's hold ourselves back this time. Uh, yeah, Kaleido, the brother can't be missed. Our uh, good Mud Dragon of the Swamp and Draco's Tapelier are our four fusions. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no tier list where you don't play these cards. I mean, it uh, would be very crazy. Obviously, there are people who don't appreciate what Lulu does and as such are missing out. But uh, yeah, like these three at least. Uh, I, I, if you're not playing them, what the fuck are you doing? Then the Adult Minerva and the Visas um, Ritara. Very much needed both for a full combo. And I mean, the cards are just incredible. Uh, not only because they're shining so much, but uh, yeah, they're just doing so much. I mean, if you get access to the Lightspawn package, you are milling eight plus cards um, and you're just getting so much out of it. You're going to see it in the test hands uh, at another day. And then the last Synchro that we're playing is the Dragite, another yeah level eight Synchro that we can easily summon in most cases. Additional Spell and Trap negates um, yeah matters a lot in the current meta, right? With the bands uh, towards Savage and Baron, Omni negates are no longer a thing. Usually we were playing Baron, but no more. And as such, yeah, bot breakers have become more and more frequent, um, maybe at your local scene as well. But that means that we need Spell and Trap negates uh, ASAP to uh, help our import, right? Usually in tier, we have like monster negates, monster based disruption. Um, so yeah, bot breakers can be kind of nasty. Not all, but some. Uh, and uh, yeah, having the extra um, insurance here with the drag guide just really helps out. Then the Time Thief Redoer, we can, like you don't want to miss him. Sure, it's maybe not the best card, 100%, but being able to uh, yeah instant fuse with your Sharon is just amazing. Then another rank four is the Barmut Shark and the Toad. Uh, yeah, I don't love these, but I mean, they're just too good, right? Uh, Toad is just an amazing card. The Omni Negate, again, much rarer nowadays uh, to have access to. And then obviously uh, the potential to get um, a card like Tier Cash back is just really nice. And it's relatively easy to make, right? With the Mud Dragon, with the Night Serpent. And uh, yeah, as such, we have him uh, many, many times on our end board. And then the last XZ is obviously the Zombie Vampire. Not much to say with our Horus cards or our level eight Synchros. We can easily get access to this uh, masterful card, milling cards, summoning cards, just great. Also gives us intel, obviously, uh, into our opponent's deck. In most cases, you will know it, but um, in case you don't know what your opponent is playing, it's just helpful. Coming lastly to the links, Cross Sheep can't be missed. It's just an amazing card. You nearly will always summon it. And uh, yeah, we continue with IP. Again, rarity upgrade is coming, but not yet there. And SP can't be missed, it's just too amazing. And lastly, Appaloosa, right? So uh, again, rarity upgrade coming, but uh, yeah. So this is our source for monster negates in most cases, our Omni negate, uh, tier based disruptions, right? And our uh, spell and trap negate. So we have monsters, spells, Omnis. Uh, yeah, we have everything in our extra deck that we need to deal with all kinds of uh, cards our opponent is throwing at us. Now I want to talk about a few cards and engines that have not made the cut. Let's start with the smallest one, right? The second Sark, as I said, I'm heavily considering putting it in. Um, I'll have to test it, but yeah. One Sark works fine. Maybe a second works better. Then there is the field spell for the Horus cards. It's relatively similar to Sark, right? Uh, it just gives you access to Imseti and then you get Sark anyway. 
It's not as beneficial as Sark, I feel like. And there's also obviously the uh, issue that it's a field spell, right? Usually that would be a great thing because it's searchable, but you really want to search other cards with your um, terraforming, for example. And while we're talking about uh, field spells, let's talk about the Ancient Fairy Dragon. I love this card and usually with the uh, walls here, it would be just an amazing synergy. But the problem is, yeah, the level seven is just not really what we're going for. Our entire um, Light Sworn Tuners are all level four. So we would need to play some extra level threes like Revolution Synchron or maybe the Destrudo, right? Uh, we've played with these cards to great success in the past, but the problems are two things really. First, our extra deck is ultra tight. So we don't really have the space for the Ancient Fairy Dragon, right? Uh, we have really nothing that we want to cut here. Uh, all these cards are amazing. We're summoning all of them very frequently. Um, so yeah, that's not really a space that we have uh, available for us uh, for very situational cards. The next thing is these cards also work well with getting into Baron, which is banned now. So the value of having the ability to choose between going into level seven place or going into level 10 place I mean, there's Agarin, which is fine, but it's just not the same, right? If you don't have some of the cards that I showed you in the extra deck and have these, this is still a, a valuable package. If you, for example, also include something like the FA, right? Instead of the Dragite, for example, right? It's a very similar card, right? Dragite needs a water monster in your graveyard, which you will like always have. I never had the issue where I don't have a water monster in my grave, uh, whereas FA is a... Uh, yeah, without any such restrictions, but it is a level seven. Very easy to make with uh, our uh, Destrudo, for example. Not so much with Revolution Synchron due to the fact that his uh, effect or his in-hand effect only works with dragons or power tool. Uh, but yeah, still, if you're looking uh, or if you want to play these cards, absolutely valid. But uh, yeah, for me, they just did not make the cut. And while we were talking about the Lightsworn tuners, let's talk about another few Lightsworn cards that uh, have not made the cut. Let's start with Aegis. Uh, so the thing is, the card is really lovely, right? It's more or less an Omni Negate, uh, obviously only for cards on field, if I remember this correctly. But the big problem is it works like our tier cards, right? So if you mill it, it's good, it sets itself. But you need a Light Sworn card on the field, uh, or rather on your end board to make use of the effect. And spoiler, that never really happens, right? Your Light Sworn cards are always uh, used as combo material to further progress your end board to further advance your place. So yeah, we don't really ha have this card live many, many times. Coming to our little dragon friend, and I already said I would play a third one if I'd be playing the punishment dragon. I played it, I tested it a while, and it's not bad, right? Uh, it's a very easy to summon, right? If you have done your combo and have uh, four lightstone cards with different names, I believe, Banished, that can happen quite easily. Uh, you can special summon it and it's a dark level eight, right? Beautiful or many things. The problem is it's just a kind of win more card, right? It doesn't really help you in your opening hand. You really need to already have done your lightstone combo to then benefit of the uh, extender potential of this card. Obviously the effect to shuffle back your tears, lovely, very nice, right? It helps you with some stuff, but it also, uh, yeah, it just puts everything back. So. Uh, if you're fearing deck out, yeah, sure, it's nice, but uh, it's just just overall not the best cards. It's not terrible, but I'm not really falling in love with it. Coming lastly to Minerva, and I played with this card a lot, right? It's just a really nice card uh, to go into if you have a very limited amount of plays. If you got hand trapped, right, then you may uh, be able to go into this. Uh, if you can't really access uh, like some other cards or like some, some uh, Synchro plays, for example. The issue is... Again, we play a big deck, so milling light swans with this to be able to draw just doesn't happen all that often. The next thing is, there is obviously the potential to leave Minerva on the end board as a, an Aegis target. And if the enemy tries to deal with her uh, to like, stop Aegis, for example, then you get to mill, uh, I think, three more. So like all of these things are all nice, but they're just really not as strong as like the other options, right? This one can be dead in hand and it's just a win more card if you already go full combo. This one again is linked to this. This one, it's like we don't end with lightsworn cards really on our end board. And this one is, uh, yeah, extra deck is too tight. 
and this one sadly didn't make the cut although it's a very nice card to have access to and uh, yeah talking about the extra deck people have already probably typed in the comments where's your dangerous where's your gurura where's your beatrice and uh yeah do you see this this is three cards in my very tight extra deck of cards that uh yeah we really need want to play and uh sure like i don't know we could cut sp or we could cut uh toad or dragite or whatever uh, we could cut valuable end board cards for a foolish burial i mean it's obviously a double foolish right it, it has like the foolish for spell or trap or monster right i'm not saying beatrice is a bad card but uh, i don't want to play these cards uh i think dangerous is absolutely like dog shit. uh gurura i never want to summon this we only have three tier names right we only have three fusions and we don't have uh, access to all three fusions every turn, right? It's not guaranteed. And we can't be wasting valuable fusions, uh, valuable names, uh, name activations, whatever you want to call them, on these cards. Uh, now, I'm not doing that. Again, extra deck space is too tight. I don't want to waste my fusions. Um, if I'd be uh, looking at sideboard options, like siding Garura, it's decent right now. So, the, like, I can understand that argument. But this card I think is just too awful and Beatrice as like a win condition or like a capable end board card like I just much rather make an Omni Negate and call it a day my friends uh, or set up Kaleido Heart which like also offers just uh, yeah, a bit more. And while talking about extra deck cards another two cards that uh, yeah just barely didn't make the cut probably if you want to like perfectly optimize it for like a YCS or something uh, Typhon is just an amazing card. Uh, like maybe you can find some play, uh, some space in this uh, if you like know the game better. But uh, yeah, Typhon is just amazing. Obviously, we don't have the space. And uh, yeah, 38 uh, was one option that I considered. Right, we make rank eights decently easy, not too easy, and that was like the big uh, decision for me. Uh, we have more options to make another level eight synchro than to go into a rank eight and. Uh, yeah, obviously they don't do exactly the same, but as a spell or trap negate, uh, yeah. In the end here, looking at three options for spell and trap negates, FA is the most uh, consistent one, right? Because it's not conditional, uh, but it's a level seven. It's a rank eight, we can do that, but it's not guaranteed. And I feel just drag out, right? The, uh, the water, you are always have an engrave, and uh, it's just so easy to make, just uh, no care in the world uh, to make an additional, um, level 8 here in this deck and now coming lastly to a package that really just hurt my soul and uh, yeah just, i really didn't want to uh put it out and that is related to colossus right i was playing uh flag corridor uh banshee um and i mean you can really cook with this you could play protos or uh, escatos which is obviously a bit weaker uh, quite a bit weaker and I mean, these are cards that are really, really sexy, man. Being able to really go ham with your malicious, right? You banish the malicious, of course, and then with flag um, or corridor, you put them back in your deck. You can banish and summon them, them again. You can go through like four copies of malicious. It's absolutely gorgeous how much card advantage uh, and profit you can generate with this. So the few reasons why these cards didn't make the cut. First of all, Again, our extra deck is super tight, and if we cut cards from our extra deck, what does the card advantage the Nemesis cards provide with the Malicious, right? Uh, what does it even net us? Not really much, just clogging our board and then having nothing to really link into. Second thing is, with the extra deck space, uh, these cards, do they like always provide the best, right? This one obviously is here to search flag, to search corridor, to get into Protoss. So it's similar to Bahamut, but then Bahamut instantly gets us Toad, whereas this one, you need to have these cards. If you mill them, yeah, you can get into big troubles. Whereas like if you mill the material for Bahamut, it's better, right? Because they revive themselves, right? The Night Serpent or, or Kaleido, they just come back. And uh, yeah, as such, there's no issue of milling like key pieces in this combo line uh, to be able to get to the end board Colossus. Then the next thing is, uh, again, like the space for Omni Negates and Spell Trap Negates, which is something that our tier deck doesn't naturally produce. And the thing is, these cards are great, right? They're literally stunning. Uh, but the problem is, 
our normal end board, right? If we have these cards, it's better, but it loses to the same things, right? If they uh, hit us with some bad board breakers, we just uh, we lose regardless, right? If we have a Protoss or a Colossus, we lose to evenly matched or whatever else, uh, like in the same fashion. But imagine instead of going for like this rank four, we go for this rank four, and instead of going for these cards, we make a Toad then, or I don't know, a Dragite, and then suddenly we cover our weakness, right? We cover the board breakers instead of just making the board bigger and like more oppressive. We cover our weaknesses and have overall a bit more of a solid board. These cards are lovely as uh, with tier, right? They can just do some really nasty things. Uh, but yeah, we just don't have the space. If you want to play these, right? If you, let's say, if you just cut some other cards out of the extra deck, uh, if you play without the Synchros, for example, because you don't play Light Swan, right? You're just looking for a tier elements pile. Then let me introduce to you to a little cook. Oh, I milled my flag. What do I do? Hey, let's make a Promethean princess, revive the flag, use the flag effect and so on and so on, right? Continue the combo. And then with flag being a level two and Pr Promethean obviously locking us into fire, we can summon sprint. So if you have the spy space, if you really want to cook, like adding these cards here to uh, your tier pile, I mean, you could really cook some nasty cards, right? Uh, not only is the Promethean obviously uh, a pop, right? Uh, sprint with uh, having the uh, Banshee, right? After she has used one of her materials is another bounce. Uh, Flag, Promethean into Sprint, Send Merly, uh, guarantees a fusion, right? You can just really go ham uh, with combining these uh, like little cards here all together to make, a, I don't know, a stun tier build instead of a like combo tier. If that's more up your avenue, that's uh, like a one uh, advice I could give you. Now, what do you say? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're at it, maybe smash that like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to not miss out on the test hand video for this Tillemans uh, list. I'm going to show you what this deck can cook. And I mean, it's going to be gorgeous. Your opponents are going to cry and uh, yeah, maybe uh, they're going to shed some tears. Anyway, with that out of the way, take care, my friends, and we're going to see each other soon. Bye bye.